Harrison, what's your favorite TV show? Spongebob. One thing that can be kind of difficult as a geeky parent is the fact that your kids may not grow up to like the same fandoms that you do. So while I have high hopes that Harrison will grow up to like things like Doctor Who and Harry Potter and Star Trek, that may actually not be the case, and I kind of have to come to terms with that. However, on the flip side, one of the really cool things about being a geeky parent is that your kids will most likely pick up on their own fandoms as they grow up and introduce you to them, so you'll get to see some stuff that you've never seen before. Spongebob is one of those examples for us. I never really watched Spongebob before I had Harrison, but he really, really enjoys it. Now, one of my favorite episodes of Spongebob is the one where Spongebob and the jellyfish have this little disco party. So the jellyfish have always been one of my favorite characters ever since I saw that episode. So I thought it would be really fun to try my hand at making my own pattern to make Harrison his very own... I made Harrison a stuffed Spongebob jellyfish toy. As you can see, he loves stuffed animals, so this was the perfect thing for him. And I wanted to share my pattern and how to make it with you guys. So check out our tutorial on how to make your very own stuffed Spongebob jellyfish. The supplies you'll need to make your own Spongebob jellyfish plush toy are a cat. Oh, wait, no. It's best not to sew with a cat, but sometimes it's unavoidable. Fabric. I used pink fleece, but you could also use any fabric with at least a small amount of stretch. To make the jellyfish, I ended up using only about half of a yard. Contrasting fabric. This is used to make the jellyfish spots, so I used a darker pink felt for this portion. Ribbon, or something similar. This will be used to make the jellyfish tentacles. I found a really great tool ribbon with a little bit of gather to it that was perfect. Search your local craft or fabric store to see what you can find that might work out for your own jellyfish. The pattern. The link to download my pattern for this jellyfish is in the description below. Note that the pattern includes a quarter inch seam allowance. Scissors. Something to mark on fabric, like a chalk wheel or fabric marker. Iron on fusible web, also known as Wonder Under. This is the stuff that you can iron onto one side of the fabric, peel off the back, and iron that piece onto another piece of fabric. If you've never used it, you really should. It's one of the greatest inventions in crafting. And some basic sewing supplies like pins, measuring tape, thread, embroidery floss, needle, a sewing machine, iron, and polyfill stuffing were also used. First, cut out the pieces according to the pattern. You'll need to cut out six of the jellyfish body pieces and one of the jellyfish bottom. I found that I could layer my fleece by folding it in half twice to get four pieces cut at once. Any more than that was just too thick. I cut the remaining two jellyfish body pieces by folding the fabric in half at once. You can either trace around the pattern and then cut it out, or you can use pins or pattern weights, whatever your preference is. Next, and this is on the pattern as well, you'll need to cut a strip of fabric two and a half inches wide by approximately 15 inches long. This will serve as the little lip around the base of the jellyfish. Try to avoid cats while you're cutting. Once you have all your pieces cut out, they should look like this. Now it's time to sew. You'll need to sew each jellyfish body piece to the next body piece, making sure the right sides of your fabric are together. My fleece did have two sides, so I just chose which side I wanted to be the right side or the side facing out on the finished stuffed animal. If you're uncomfortable using a sewing machine, you could always sew it by hand, though this would take much longer. Remember that there is a quarter inch seam allowance, so make sure to sew a quarter inch in from the edge. Fun fact, the sewing machine I'm using was my grandmother's, the same machine she taught me to sew on when I was about five years old. I get a little wave of nostalgia every time I use it. Once all six of your jellyfish body pieces are sewn together, it should look like this. Next, it's time to sew that little strip on to the bottom of your jellyfish body circle. Fold the strip in half and pin it down to the right side of the jellyfish body fabric with the raw edges facing the bottom of the jellyfish. Stitch the strip down. You'll most likely have a little extra fabric from the strip left over at the end. You can sew one end of the strip to the other end and then cut off the remainder of the fabric. Next, take your ribbon or whatever you're using for jellyfish tentacles and pin strips to the inside of your jellyfish body. You can make them as long or as short as you would like. I made six tentacles for this size of jellyfish. 
Once you pin your tentacle strips to the inside of the jellyfish body, you'll need to make sure that they are stuffed inside before pinning on the bottom circle. You may need to stretch and mold your fabric slightly as you pin on the bottom circle. Remember to pin right sides facing together. Also, leave a gap wide enough to turn and stuff the jellyfish later. I left a gap several inches long. Once you stitch on the bottom circle, you can turn the jellyfish right side out to reveal a mostly finished jellyfish, but you're not done yet. Next, decide how big you want your jellyfish spots to be. I played around with my chalk wheel until I came up with sizes I was happy with. Then I traced circles onto my Wonder Under and ironed those circles onto my dark pink felt. You'll want to make sure that the bumpy side faces down on your Wonder Under. Next, I cut off the felt around the ironed on circles, peeled off the backing of the Wonder Under, and ironed the circles onto the fleece jellyfish body. Looking back, I would have moved the iron around a little bit more instead of resting it in one spot for too long. I ended up with a few iron marks that became really hard to get out of the felt and fleece fabric. After ironing on the spots, I felt the jellyfish was lacking something, so I decided to use embroidery floss to stitch around the outline of the circles with a simple running stitch. This was really effective and gave the jellyfish some depth, but isn't entirely necessary. Finally, it's time to stuff your jellyfish with polyfill and hand stitch it closed. One last finishing touch I put on because I knew the jellyfish would get lots of playtime with my son was to finish off the raw edges of the tulle ribbon I used for tentacles so they wouldn't ravel later on. I stitched two lines of zigzag stitches at the bottom of each and finished them off with some fray check. And there's a finished jellyfish. As you can see, Harrison loved it. All right, that was my tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, as you can see in the video, I bought way too much fabric for this project. Now, because I had so much extra, I thought, what else am I gonna do with this pink fleece but to make... Jumbo jellyfish! We made a jumbo jellyfish! I couldn't resist, and I'm so glad I did because he turned out, I think, even better than mini jellyfish. What's been your favorite part about the jellyfish? Playmaker. Once again, if you want to make your very own stuffed SpongeBob jellyfish plush toy at home, you can download the pattern in the description below, so check that out. If you guys do make your own jellyfish, I would love to see pictures. So tweet pictures to me so I can see your finished results. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. And as always, subscribe to my channel to see more. We have a really exciting guest on our vlog next week, so you guys don't want to miss that. I'd also love to hear in the comments below what some of your favorite fandoms were as a kid or what some of your kids enjoy as well. So make sure to leave those in the comments below. I'll see you guys next week. Oh yeah, share this video with your friends. I'll see you guys next week on another episode of Love Love the Geek. Okay, okay.